Yeah, welcome back to the Transfer Show Christmas special. Now, one of the big moves in the past couple of months was, of course, a managerial move, which saw Antonio Conte become the new manager at Tottenham Hotspur. Could be a very busy January transfer window indeed. Now, Gianluca Di Marzio knows Antonio Conte very well, and he spoke to one of Conte's former teammates and his close friend, Alessandro Del Piero. Alessandro, siamo italiani, ma dobbiamo parlare inglese. We have to speak English, no? <laughs> we have to try to speak English, okay. <laughs> Antonio Conte, you know Antonio Conte very well. He yeah. came back to Premier League. What yeah. uh, can we expect, what they uh, can expect about Antonio Conte here? Well, I think more or less what happened with Chelsea in terms of uh, his personality uh, and behavior inside and outside the pitch. He's, he's a great guy, we know him very well. Why is he nicknamed the Hammer? Yeah, we used to say this because he's very demanding on the pitch and uh, inside the pitch uh, and outside the pitch. And, and this is what usually happens with him daily, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, very, it's very important demanding in terms of professionality, responsibility effort and other things. We came back to, to speak Italian, now it's better. <laughs> yeah, it's quite easier, I feel. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. Yeah, those are the thoughts of Alessandro Del Piero and Antonio Conte's arrival at Tottenham Hotspur. Gianluca, you spoke to Alessandro and you were really across that story with regard to Conte. What did you make of the move? Did it come as a surprise to you? Yes, because um, during the summer Antonio refused uh, to accept uh, Tottenham uh, uh, appointment, not, not because he, he, he doesn't want to go, because uh, uh, he left Inter uh, only some weeks before, and, and in that moment uh, he, he wanted a, an instant winning team. Uh, then when Antonio Conte stays uh, too much at home and he was with, uh, with us in Sky, in Sky Sport Italy, uh, he, he wanted to come, to come back, to come back, to train uh, on the bench. And Daniel Levy and Fabio Paratici, they were uh, uh, so convincing to him to, to say, no, you have to come, you have to come, you have to come. And, uh, and I saw him happy. When I was in Tottenham Sports Center, I saw him happy. He wants to win. Daniel Levy wants to win because he created, he, he built something incredible. Sports Center is amazing, the stadium, but now they have to win. And I think Antonio and Fabio, the, the, the Italian couple, is the, the, the perfect uh, uh, couple to win. Would well, he have been given assurances, though, about January? About the recruitment and how many January, players? January, but I think for June. Gen uh, January transfer market is difficult. If you, if you want uh, top player, young top player, because they, they want young top players, it's, it's difficult to, to appoint them in, in, in January. So I think in June they will do an important transfer market. I want to ask you as well about his relationship with Harry Kane. Mm. Because before Antonio arrived, Harry seemed to be sort of down. He wasn't his usual self. Obviously, we all know what happened with Manchester City in, in the summer. But Antonio has come in there straight away. Harry's happy, he's smiling. He seems to be the old Harry Kane. What is it about Antonio's man management that will get the best out of Harry Kane? Uh, Antonio sp speaks a lot with the players uh, and they work a lot. Uh, and I think that uh, Son, uh, Kane, uh, if they work uh, a lot and then in, 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 in the pitch uh, they, they understand that working more they, they, they can do uh, better more. performances, uh, they, they, they work more in, 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 the, in the training. Uh, I, I thought that uh, in the statics, statistics, statistics of Premier League, Tottenham was in the last positions before Antonio Conte arrived. Now he's in the, the first position, so rhythm of uh, intensity of everything. So uh, I think that the players know that. Uh, so when I, wa when I was there, uh, I was not like a journalist because I was there with Alessandro. And I, I, saw, I saw the training and I, I saw them working with smiling. Uh, working a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, but smiling. So I think this is the secret. I want to ask you as well about Antonio and Manchester United because you look at his record, he's won seven titles in nine seasons. And then when it looked like 
the opportunity might be there for him to become a Manchester United manager. Manchester United basically let it be known that they didn't want him, that he was too intense or too demanding. You know, they didn't want a manager of that profile. But a lot of people don't understand because his profile is a winner. Why would Manchester United not want a winner? They, they approached him. They had contacts with him, with his uh, uh, entourage. Uh, but they wanted him for June. They, they, re really, they, they wanted to, 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 <coughs> to go forward with, uh, with Soshka in that moment. After uh, the, 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 the Liverpool uh, match, uh, they, they wanted to, 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 go, to go with, uh, with Ole and they, they, they talked to Antonio but uh, for June. Uh, Antonio w w wanted to, to come back immediately because he wanted to, to train but he, he would have loved to, to coach Manchester United because he thought that the United team could be immediately competitive, immediately winning. Uh, Max, I just want to bring you in here because in England, obviously, it's a, it's a huge story. In Italy, it's a huge story. Did it transcend in, into Germany as well, Conte to Tottenham? Yeah, sure. It was a kind of a surprise because, as Kavi uh, pointed out, he, was, uh, or he used to be a manager who was winning a lot of titles. And people in Germany, football fans in Germany, are wondering, is that really a club where Antonio Conte can win titles? Can Tottenham win the Premier League in the next couple of years? Can Tottenham, of course, FA Cup maybe always is possible, but they probably won't win the Champions League. Uh, would be a big, big surprise. So, yeah, he's a big manager. P German people like him, but they look up to him as a really manager for the big, big, big teams. And I'm not sure if he really is going to win a lot of titles with Tottenham. He would be perfect for Bayern Munich. Yeah. <laughs> after yeah. Trapattoni, yeah, after Ancelotti, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Italian uh, G -G -G -G. dynasty. Yeah. Do you think he's at the same level when people talk about the best managers in the world? People talk about... Pep Guardiola, they talk about Jurgen Klopp, they talk about Thomas Tuchel. Do you think Antonio Conte deserves to be in that company, at that level? I think so. He, he wins. Uh, he won in Italy, he won in Premier League. Uh, he, he needs the, the international step. He needs the Champions League step. So he, he, he wants to, to, to win Champions League and so he needs to, to finish in the, in the first four uh, positions with Tottenham. To, to, to have the, the opportunity next year to be in Champions League and to try to, to be in the, in, in the teams that can, can win. Often managers sign players who they're familiar with or who they've managed before. Can you see the same thing happening with Tottenham? Will Antonio Conte go to players that have played under him and served him well and try to bring them into Tottenham? Should be, but... Uh... There is Fabio Paratici too, and Fabio Paratici is a sports director with an international uh, mentality, so um, it, they don't need to, uh, to appoint only uh, Italian players or, from, or for Syria players. They, 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 they can buy players all over the world, in France, in Spain, so I don't think so. I don't think so, but um, for example, for example, eh, it's an example, Kessi, Frank Kessi of Milan is out of contract in June, is a player that Antonio Conte likes, that Fabio Paratici likes. So, uh, if I have to say one name, but it depends on the economical situation. He wants a lot of money, of wages. So, probably he, he doesn't come. I don't know. But um, Conte and Paratici has the, the same feelings about the players. So, so probably they, they, they can. If we're talking about Serie A, mm. the one player mm. that everybody wants. Barella. Vlaovic. Ah, Vlaovic. <laughs> We'll, we'll come to Barella in a minute. People, people are talking about Vlaovic, he's going to cost 100 million euros. No, uh, less. Less because he's he, contracted. Yes, only one year and a half contract. Where do you think he will go? Juventus wants him a lot. Atletico Madrid wanted him last summer. Tottenham, I think they, they, they want not a replacement of Kane, but an, another striker that, that can play with Kane or when or where Kane is injured. Or, so uh, I think he, he will be one of the most important uh, don't, transfers. Don't forget the Bundesliga clubs because yes. Dortmund and Bayern Munich both are monitoring the situation mm. of Vlaovic because Dortmund is Holland, uh, is Holland needs is to replace Haaland probably mm. next summer. So mm. Vlaovic is one of the affordable guys. 
Uh, and Bayern Munich uh, thinks about him as well. They have him on the list because you never know what will happen to Lewandowski. Mm. Are you able to get Haaland? And then Lau, which is just... He's super. Uh, How good he is. Super. People are saying that he's starting to compare him, for instance, to Batistuta. You know, who's, who's, a, who's a legend in Florence. Is, is he Batistuta, getting to that? Uh, if I have to, 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 to see a model of, of, of player, it's, I think it's like Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I think it's like a young Ibrahimovic. So he could be that good? I think so. I think so. I'm going to throw a couple of other names at you. It'd be a particular I'm not interest. The director of. <laughs> no, a particular interest to, to English football fans as well in, in Aaron Ramsey, his situation. And also, you mentioned Barella as well. Any, any possibility that those two would be leaving? Barella, no, because he renewed his contract uh, with Inter, Inter Milan, and he will stay in Inter Milan. But if, if I, <coughs> I have to say a player that can play in Manchester United, in Chelsea, is Barella, but not this year. And Ramsey, Ramsey in, in, in Juventus, in, in, uh, I don't know how, how can you say, the, there is no love. Uh, so I think it's better for, for Ramsey and for Juventus to, to find a, a new solution. And I think Premier League is the right tournament for, uh, for his uh, skills. What has gone wrong for him yeah, in Italy? It's, it's difficult for uh, uh, some kind of, of players... Uh, to adapt to, to Italian yes, football. Yes, to Italian tactics, yes. Uh, he had a lot of injuries too. Uh, and, the, and then the situation of Juventus... Uh, uh, it's not the Juventus of, of some years ago. They have a lot of problems. Uh, so now they are trying to to rebuild a new a new team, and probably is not the kind of, of play ideal player for uh, for Massimiliano mm -hmm. Lady. When he started to play in the central position, and then he had injured. So. Um, uh, we, I, I think it's better for everyone to, to separate. We, we've also seen Napoli mm? playing so well mm -hmm. this season. Mm -hmm. Are there any of their players? Who you think could move in 2022? Every, who, who year, we, every year we say Kalidou Koulibaly is going <laughs> somewhere, and then Kalidou Koulibaly is staying in, uh, in Napoli. Um, I think that Victor Osimhen is uh, like Vlavic, a super player with some problems. With, he, he had this, this injury against uh, but Inter expensive, Milan. Huh? Very expensive. They, yeah. they paid him 70 million of euros, so I think. What's his contract situation? No, he arrived uh, two years ago, so they don't want to sell him, but I think he will be the, the, the next one to, to go to Premier League or to yeah. Bundesliga. He's super because his skills are, are, are particular. Uh, he, he's uh, uh, speed, he's quick, um, he's strong. Uh, physically strong, he attacks. Uh, it's difficult for the, uh, the defence to, to stop him. He, he used to play in the Bundesliga, he used to play yes, in Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. But it didn't, uh, he didn't play well at all, mm. and then he went to France and exposed. Mm. And he's another 100, 100 million? I think so. 100 million euros. Plenty going on, it feels like, then in Serie A. But oh, you, you have money in Premier League, so you can... <laughs> Give us your money. Give us we your have money. no money. <laughs> yeah. in, 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 in Italy, we, uh, we, we eat uh, in, at Christmas, we eat uh, fish, spaghetti alle vongole, <laughs> no? And you hear it gold uh, <laughs> in because you have money. Gianluca, we are the development leagues for the Premier League. We're developing the talents, bringing up we the players them. and you take them. I'm the, I'm the poor. <laughs> you are I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that's in Italian. Obviously, obviously plenty going on in Serie A, but also plenty going on in the Bundesliga. And we'll be speaking to Max about the likes of Jude Bellingham, Erling Haaland and Robert Lewandowski, plus my colleague, and friend, Carve Solokol sits down with British football's first £100 million player, Jack Grealish, coming up next.